there, I'm Bruce and today I'm going to do a video on my off-road four-wheel drive fire truck which was sent for scrap. The truck's been sitting for many, many years and uh, we've got the truck and now we've done some repairs on it and now we'll be able to use it on our property. It's a bit of a rare truck in Australia because it's an M-series four-wheel drive Bedford and the military here never had Bedford four-wheel drive trucks so it is pretty unusual to see one of these in Australia. Like There's heaps of Bedfords out there and I think they were made in Australia but to actually have a four-wheel drive one is pretty rare but it's, it's actually been made as a designated fire truck right from new. It's a 1978 model. It's got fairly heavy diffs and everything in it. We're not sure whether they're eaten diffs or what they are, but they look like they're pretty, pr pretty big for the size of the truck. Uh, the, the truck also came with about 15 books with it, but I haven't had time to read through the books just to find out all about it. So I've been busy working on it. It's fitted with Olympic Trojan tires, which are 9R20s. There's still a fair bit of tread on them, but look at that. Looks like they had another work and they've still got the little some have got the little knobs just on the sides of them there, so I guess they've done a little bit, but not much. I suppose they're not running down here, but they're running up there, but yeah, there's a good depth of tread in there yet. And uh, they've got this idea on the back here with these, with these big DC electric motors, and the chain has been sitting for that long, the chain's just like a solid bit of steel, and when you push that button, you can see the whole thing here is trying to move. So there's still power getting the DC motors, one on either side. Um, I, don't know whether, I don't know whether there's something you can change on here to make it power out, or whether you do something, you just make it freewheel, pull the hose out, and you just use this to wind the hose back. It's fitted with a Volkswagen engine. I don't know what horsepower or what size. I know they come in a, in a lot of different sizes. But it's a pretty fair size pump. It's got, well, I don't know whether this is on the suction side here. So I guess it's made so they could suck out of a water hole or a creek or whether, um, and it's got outlets up the top, it's sort of made up the top so a whole heap of men could set up the top. I don't know whether that would pass health and safety these days or not, but there's a couple of hoses that can be worked up on the top. Looks like the engine's only done 80 hours by the hour meter over here on the side. Um, it's got some other gauges up there, which I guess are probably pressure gauges. I haven't really got up there and had a close look at them. But one of these days I'll try and get it going. It's a bit of an unusual setup with a starter motor on an angle like that. So I don't quite know how that works, but um, it'd certainly pump a lot more water than a Honda or a Briggs & Stratton type pump like we normally see around the place here. Got these hatches all along the side. I don't know whether the men would have had their, their bags and shovels or whatever they would have had in there, maybe wet bags or something. And um, it's an unusual setup. Uh, the doors are aluminium. That looks to be fiberglass, but it could be fiberglass over aluminium. I'm really really not sure and I guess they've had these numbers on here so they would have said to the men right race over to door number two it's got such and such in it door number one and I guess I guess they're numbered around the other side as well and it's got this really unusual setup it's got these big rubber mounts here at the back big rubber mounts here that can flex a bit but when you come up here it's got this arrangement here see how the I can put my hands through here. It's not resting on the chassis at all. And it's got this spring. It's got a semi-elliptical spring, I think it is, going across there to hold the tank up. So as the machine's going off-road, twisting and winding and everything, the tank is not getting stressed. The tank is, is sprung, rubbers at the back, spring at the front, so the chassis can twist, but the tank's not getting stressed. So that's, a, you know, someone would have went to a lot of trouble to engineer all that. We've got this temporary outboard tank hooked up here now. We've got it tethered on there so it can't fall off. Here's its main tank, but when we undid the drain bung, it wouldn't even run out. We thought it must be empty. So anyway, got a stick and had the bung out already. And the next thing it started dribbling out and just the most rotten smell. So we took the breather cap, took the filler cap off so it could breathe. And uh, got, ended up getting about probably, probably at least 20 litres of old fuel out of it couple of times it stopped so I got a bit of rag and put on top and a bit of compressed air to keep it going. Anyway we've got some premium unleaded in there now sloshing around. We're going to drive it around a bit uphill and down dale so to speak and see if that can slosh around and then I can actually still smell that, that smell that even though the lid's not perfectly tight I can still get a whiff of that every now and then that's still got that rotten smell about it. It's got air over hydraulic brakes which I'm not a real big favour of but anyway it's got um, it's got the system here, must have been done up at some stage, and if you look in here you can see the, the power steering ram and 
whatever. And of course, I'd say they've had this piece pulled off, which is sitting up in the back there, so they can get in there and work on the thing a bit easier because as most people know, these, the cabs on these don't tilt, so they're pretty hard to work on if you've got to get underneath there and do anything major. You can open this up, and that gives you a bit of a, a, bit of a go at the engine. It's probably not too bad, but then if you pull up the floor and that inside wheel, you can probably get at the other part, but you know, certainly modern trucks are probably decked out a lot better than that. The brakes on it work really well, surprisingly well, and we haven't had to do any work on the brakes at all, and uh, the engine seems to idle off pretty well. I don't know whether the odometer is right on it, but it's only, well, close to 22,000, so I've had a bit of a look around underneath and I can't see any, any play in the tail shaft and the unis or anything like that, and everything underneath there looks pretty sound, so I don't really know whether that is right, but maybe it is. It, it could be right. The seats and that look like they've still got the original upholstery on them. The upholstery's gone a bit hard, but there's no big rips or tears in the seats, which is amazing. But there's other feature on there where it's got a pretty big worn winch on the thing. Anyway, I've probably spent over a day trying to vacuum and try and sponge down everything inside the cab. And of course, a bit of rat poo and a bit of stuff like that in there. But anyway, while I was doing all that, I found the controller that plugs in for the winch. You just must pull that bung put it on there and I don't know what else you've got to do to bring it to life but I was surprised at that so that's another feature the thing's got and I guess if I if I do decide to drive around the paddock after rain or whatever and I get stuck well there's a pretty heavy duty looking winch sitting there on it if it goes. One person was pretty keen to find out what was on top of the tank up here well that's what's up here this bit here may even be aluminium I suspect and of course I don't know how many men they could sit across here I suppose if they weren't too I suppose if they weren't too big a joke as they could you know might be able to fit six, eight, ten across here if they really pushed it. We've got these outlets on top up here. Another one over here. I don't know whether you can see that. We've got taps here and we've got a hose here and a hose there. Um, that's the inner mudguard part that's been pulled off so they could work on the brakes at some stage. The tanks here in the middle, this lower section, is the tank and of course that's the compartments with the doors on either side along the side there. I think it's around 3,000 700 or 3,800 litres just by it has got a gauge on the back there but I haven't really cleaned it up to have a good look at what the markings are on it everyone's fairly eager to see how this thing goes so we'll take it back over the other side and put some more fuel in it and take it for a bit of a drive around the paddock we've topped up with fuel we've checked the oil and we're all ready to take it for a run might have a blocked fuel filter. It seems to be okay on flat ground but it's not much good on the hills it just won't pull so I think it might be lack of fuel once it comes under a bit of, bit of hard labour I suppose you'd say. We'll pull it off now and have a look at it and just see how much rubbish is in the fuel filter. We've got the filter off now. Looks pretty dirty looking so I'm just going to blow it out on a clean piece of rag and see what comes out. Looks okay. It looks okay, surprisingly okay. I can't figure that out, but uh, it still could be rubbish in the carburetor too that once you start driving it around, it's only got to have a few bits of old hard varnish looking pieces in the carburetor and something that's drifting backwards and forwards over top of the main jet or something. So the carburetor may have to come off yet. There seems to be a big jump in the gears too. I've got it in low range there now, but when you go from first, very low geared, second, still low geared, third big step up when you go up in the third and um you know if you're going up a bit of an incline you haven't got many revs doesn't really want to pull too well in third but if you go back to second where you've got more revs it seems to be happier doing that been around i've lubed up all these points all these moving 
points on the throttle and uh, sprayed them with CRC in the hope that we can get a nice smooth throttle that will return to an idle. And a lot of these older things, that sort of thing can rust up and if they're diesel powered it's usually the stopper cable will be seized or it won't return. Yeah, it's starting to feel a bit better than now. CRC might be starting to soak in a bit. Meanwhile, we're probably flooding the car better pretty well. There's not much else we can do about it. Yeah, that is starting to feel quite good there now. The CRC, WD-40 I mean, might be starting to work its way in. Just got the distributor cap off now. I'm just having a bit of a look inside. I'm always suspicious whether there's carbon laying around in there off the carbon rod in the middle. See how there's dust and junk sitting in there? Stuff like that can actually short them out if it gets bad enough. And I haven't checked the points to see if they're opening it, but it's still got points in it, this motor, which I'm surprised about. It might have had something electronic on it by 1978, but um, yeah, it's just something else we can have a bit of a look at and um, check the points and see if they are opening or whether how burnt they are. Sometimes these distributors can get um, carbon dust inside. If the carbon rod wears, sometimes some people sand the top of the rotor button, which is here, and if they do sand that, then it'll wear away the carbon rod. I can see somewhere someone's had sandpaper on that. You can see the carbon dust laying around on top there. Really need to give that a good clean up. And up in here, whenever I blow the cap out, there can be carbon dust in there. It can even short from one, one electrode to the other. I always put my finger over the carbon rod so it can't blow out, otherwise they just go straight into orbit and you never see them again. So hold your finger on the carbon rod. And when you come down here to do the distributor, if you decide you're going to clean the, the in, blow the inside of the distributor out, put your finger over the little, the little felt um, duver there that you put a drop of oil on every so often so it doesn't get lost. Too bad but there is a fair bit of dust over the wires and over the sides of the plugs the points are opening I've got a bit of 600 wet and dry here I'll give them a bit of a clean what I normally do is I get a piece about that size and I fold it over try and keep it nice and stiff and then I'll probably just use a screwdriver to take a bit of weight off the points to open them up and I'll just work that and I'll just slowly let more and more weight come onto the sandpaper sometimes if you just try and um, you know have it too tight well you, the paper will just bend once you've bent the paper you might as well just chuck it away then start again now i'm just using this screwdriver here to regulate the amount of pressure that's going on the points so they're not too tight and you can regulate you know you can hear it see if i let too much pressure go on there the sandpaper won't slide You can see there now, a bit more junk coming off the points, but pretty clean now compared to what it was when I first started. And I'll just get a bit of compressed air now and give that a bit of a blow. And then I'll go from that, probably a bit of rag on a screwdriver or whatever, if I can get in there. Yeah, a bit of dust blew out. These are actually ventilated points. If you can see there, you can see there's a hole where I'm touching with the screwdriver. They've usually got bigger pads and they usually last longer. I can't actually get a good look at the other side, but yeah, ventilated points. If you, if you buy any, um, the part number always ends in a V, normally from memory. See that at the start, I think it's at the end of the part number. Uh, v stands for ventilated and I reckon they're much better. I reckon they'll last a lot longer. And see this little wick on here? I'm going to put a drop of oil on that because this is like a split shaft. This actually goes over top of another shaft. When you rev it up, there's a mechanical advance. There's a weight in here that way and a weight in there that way. And they've got springs on them. You normally a little spring on one side and a big spring on the other side. And as you rev it up, the mechanical advance, that turns the rotor button around and advances the spark. <coughs> as that turns that around, it opens the points at an earlier stage. And that's a mechanical advance. This part here is your vacuum advance. <coughs> that's coming from vacuum from the, oh well, from 
under the throttle flap or just around near the throttle flap. There's a rubber diaphragm in here. And what happens when you get into cruise mode and you've got vacuum, this thing pulls that around like so. That is very stiff, really stiff. And that's, that's your vacuum advance. These things always have a mechanical advance and a vacuum advance. That is really stiff. Yeah, I suppose it might come good. I might be able to put a bit of CRC. Man, there's a, actually there's a ball bearing on that sitting on this little plate here. I wouldn't want to go spraying too much around there. wouldn't want to get on the points, but yeah, I'm going to get an oil can. I'll put a drop of oil in that. Just going to put a couple of drops of oil on the felt. Won't need much. Just going to clean the points now with a bit of clean cloth. I've got it wrapped around, a, about a, I don't know, about a 25 or 30 south feeler gauge roughly. I reckon it works a bit better with a feeler gauge rather than a screwdriver. If I can open those points up and get that down into there. Make sure that there's no grit or rubbish in between there. Righto. And the points look like they're set at about 22 thou or something, which I suspect is probably a bit on the wide side. Now the next thing is I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the cam. I've always had good luck with BP grease. Let's put a bit around here on that cam. Spread that around there. You don't need too much. Too much is no good and not enough is no good. That bit of grease off of there. Get around behind there. It's already got grease on it, so just add a bit more to it. Just going to clean the distributor cap out now. There's a couple of different ways you can go about this. I'm just going to, you can see the dirt and dust in there. It's going to run around in here with this artist brush. Clean behind the electrodes. Clean around where the carbon rod is. Make everything so it's nice and loose. Once you do that with the brush, everything's loosened up. Well, spark plugs have been out, had a bit of a clean, re-gapped them down a little bit closer because if the gap's too wide, sometimes when they're pulling hard they'll miss because the gap's too wide. Check the points, they're probably a little bit on the wide side, gave them a bit of a light sand, a bit of a clean, clean the rotor button, clean the inside of the distributor cap out, and uh, we changed the fuel filter, so if it still runs hairy it might be junk in the carburetor. We'll take it for another run now and see what happens. across the creek now. The creek's still running, not too bad. Getting a bit soft on this edge of the creek where there's no, no pavers. Probably steeper than what it looks.
just about burned through all of our fuel, so we've headed back to the shed. And I suspect it might be running a bit retarded. It just seems to be, when you go around and put your hand near the exhaust, there's a pretty fair draft coming out the exhaust. And usually if they're like that, they're a bit on the retarded side. And, you know, I just feel it needs a bit of an advance up. And it might be still mucking the carburetor too. It's idling okay. But if you get up in the high gears and you're down low in the revs, yeah, I just thought it might have been a little bit better. It's okay if you're in the lower gears. Yeah, driving around the paddock and that where it's pretty rough, it does ride pretty good for something with leaf springs. I don't know what that tank and motor way on the back there, but it's probably one of the smoothest riding trucks I've ever been in. And I guess if you had that water tank full of, of water, it would ride even better, I'd reckon. Later on in the week, I might put a timing light on it if I can remember and if I get a chance, and that might do it for today. But um, somewhere further down the track, I might even see if that VW motor's seized up or see if it'll turn over, have a bit of a look at it. Uh, we have got some books that came with this truck, so we should really have a bit of a look at them and, um, you know, find out a bit about where the timing should be set and find out a bit about the pump on the back and what the do's and don'ts are. If you've had anything to do with these off-road trucks, feel free to leave a comment. That'll be it for today's video. And until next time, thanks for watching.